The last five years I've been the owner of a Tonking Imperial. Recorded with it, played shows with it, the whole shebang. Until a few days, I never really experienced the amp and what it's been capable of all this time. And that's such a waste because there were quite some times I wasn't really happy with it. Sometimes it just didn't click between us. Some pedals didn't really work with the amp or I had trouble finding the sweet spot. I was never 100% satisfied. I was happy with it for sure, but I had the feeling it could be so much better. And I was right. As I said, I played the amp in various occasions. Played live shows in front of 20 people in tiny cafes, up to big shows for 5,000 people in festival tents. But never did I play the amp the way I ideally wanted it to. In the tiny venues, it'd always be the sound guy who says, Paul, your amp is too loud. Then you think, in the big shows, I can crank the amp. No, it's either the brass section that's complaining, or it's the lead vocalist saying the amp is too much in his ears. And the next time it's gonna be the backing vocalist complaining my amp is too loud. I'm not Stevie Ray Vaughan, I can't say this is my sound, deal with it. That's not the way it works in bands on stage. So the amp I'm talking about is a two channel 20 watt combo. This is the rhythm channel. It's voiced a bit like a Princeton or a deluxe reverb. And this is the lead channel. Voice more like a tweed amp. So this is not the typical two channel clean overdrive amp. Both channels are pretty clean. On first sight the lead channel sounds a little bit more dull and a little less full and rich. A little less sparky on top and more heavy on the mid-range. But it's supposed to be like that. Once the sound fattens out, it fills the spectrum nicely. Supposedly. I never tried it because the amp is always too loud. I really never heard this before. In the manual there's three sample settings of the lead channel. The tweet clean, 70s rock distortion and saturated distortion. But the 70s rock distortion and the saturated distortion. I never heard it. It was too damn loud. The volume passed two, two and a half and adding the mid bite, it didn't happen. It was too loud. So that's why I ended up only using the rhythm channel with pedals for the overdrive. But that caused another problem because that channel didn't really work with some of my overdrive pedals. So that's why I never been 100% happy with this amp. But I think that might have changed. I hooked the amp up to an attenuator or load box. What that basically means is the following. The load box will soak up quite a big amount of the volume and make the amp suitable for whatever you need. In your home, on stage, in the studio, in the bedroom, in your kitchen, in your dining area, whatever. And now I can finally use all those sweet lead channel sounds this amp has to offer. For the first time. So this was the lead channel with mid bite at 9. The mid bite really pushes the end tubes of the tone king. So we're not hearing an overdriven preamp, we're hearing the output tubes that are being pushed really hard. Now let's crank the mid bite some more, up till 10. This sounds really good and I never heard anything like this from this amp before because if I turn down the attenuator my ears would literally start bleeding. But I really love this tone, it has a sort of British voiced sound to it. I've had this amp for 5 years and it never sounded as good as today. Crazy. You 
couldn't achieve something like this with just adding a master volume to the amp. Because the thing you're hearing, the saturated overdriven sound, are the power tubes and not the preamp tubes. The volume of the preamp is only at 3 or 4 ish. It's the mid byte that's pushing the power tubes to its limits. So, this is a really difficult thing about amps. It's so much subjected to volume and everything interacts with each other. So, dialing in a good tone at home doesn't mean you've got a good tone on stage and vice versa. The load box I'm using today is from Universal Audio, it's called the Aux Box. It can work as just a simple attenuator, but it also has a speaker simulation. So you can turn the volume of the amp totally off, you don't hear anything, and you can just play with headphones or a direct out from the Aux Box. But this video is more about the amp itself, so I decided to leave that out of the equation and record the amp with an Earthworks SR25 microphone. So all the sounds you're hearing are coming from this mic directly into the sound card to the computer. And I think you can even get a mayory tone out of this. Without any pedals, just the Strat and the amp. So now I just have to figure out my whole sound again. When do I use the overdrive pedals? When do I use which channels? Oh man, <laughs> what did I get myself into? So let's see how fat and lush we can make the sound. sweet. Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope this video gave you some insight in attenuators and how they work with amps. Have a wonderful day and see you next time with another video. Cheers!